What's shaking, everyone? It's Don Consuelo here with the DKS Show, and in our inaugural episode, we're going to be taking a look at Lori Lightfoot and her response to the Black Lives Matter riots that have been taking over Chicago for the better part of two months here. So, just for a little bit of context, I'm going to take a look at just a little bit of her background. So prior to be elected mayor, Lori got her Bachelor of Arts from the University of Michigan, as well as a junior doctorate at the University of Chicago. That allowed her to uh, practice law at Myron Brown, for those who are unaware, is a very large law firm, a global law firm that is the 19th largest in the world. So it's not an insignificant job to get and based on history of a lot of politicians it's law is generally a good foundation in order to start a political career so when she did take that next step into public office she became the president of the chicago police board and the chair of the chicago accountability task force those are two very influential job titles that she held prior to becoming mayor of Chicago. And for those who care about such things, she's the first openly LGBT person of color and the second woman to have ever been elected to the office of mayor of Chicago. So with that out of the way, let's get on to our first article. So at this point I was really starting to understand what kind of person Lori Lightfoot was when aldermen in her city were starting to voice their displeasure, voice their concern of the riots that were going on. And as you can see here, during that phone conversation, because in person, visits were suspended because of the ongoing pandemic. It's Raymond Lopez here. He was voicing concerns because the riots were going through his district and destroying businesses and the citizens that he was tasked with looking after were being victimized by these things. So instead of offering help in the phone meeting that was held between the Aldermans and Mayor Lightfoot here, Lori just went off. <laughs> she offered no help. She listened to the complaints as she would probably characterize them as. So from here we're starting to be exposed as to what kind of individual. So you see here by the headline, Mayor Lori Lightfoot blasts Chicago Alderman for leaking audio of contentious phone call. Shame on him. So what was this Alderman trying to get at? What was he bringing up that was just so deeply too offensive to somebody in such a um, weak situation? like the mayor of Chicago, the third largest city in the United States. Let's take a look. Mayor Lightfoot blasted an unnamed alderman for leaking audio of a heated conversation between her and city council, saying Chicago leaders need to be able to speak candidly amongst themselves. Uh, you're elected officials. You're paid by the taxpayers. Um, why do these meetings need to be kept secret? Was there anything pressing in discussing the ongoing riots, the ongoing response to the pandemic that needed to be kept confidential. Press X to doubt on that one, folks. During the height of civil unrest in Chicago neighborhoods following the Minneapolis police killing of George Floyd, Lightfoot hosted a call with all 50 aldermen that devolved after Southwest Side Alderman Raymond Lopez complained what he said was an inadequate response by the city to looting. When Lopez finished his comments, Lightfoot tried to move on without answering him, and Lopez insisted that she addressed his questions. If you guys have been able to listen to the audio recording of the meeting, uh, this Alderman Lopez was very passionate about the destruction that was coming through his neighborhood, the affected constituents that he's been elected to represent. He had genuine concerns about sending in police officers to stop the looting, to stop the rioting, to stop 
all the destruction that's happening in the neighborhood. And as you can see here, the mayor dismissed it without even a second thought. She, at the end of the conversation, just decided, oh, okay, thanks for your piece, and I'll just move on to something less taxing that I can respond to. When Raymond brought it up again to get some kind of a response from Lightfoot, as you can see here with the next line. So Lightfoot says, I think you're 100% full of shit, is what I think. Grammatically correct, and spoken like a true leader, obviously. And then Lopez, being audibly exasperated with the situation, well, fuck you then. And if you're elevating something to your superior, if you're bringing up a need for help, if you're trying to remedy a situation and you're met with dismissal and then met with sheer disdain, you feel helpless and you can't go back to your constituents with empty hands. So in our next article, a few weeks ago, a time of recording here, it's actually about two weeks ago, uh, there was a man who was shot in Inglewood after a time of relative peace in Chicago, as much as Chicago has peace. On the side of looting and rioting, it was relatively calm until the situation where the police shot a when the police shot a man in Inglewood and it led to Black Lives Matter deciding that uh, hey you know what uh, we could really be using some stuff and um, Magnificent Mile probably has a lot of nice fucking stuff so we're just gonna go down there and uh, take what we want how about that so hundreds of people swept through the Magnificent Mile and other parts of downtown Chicago early Monday, smashing windows, looting stores, and confronting police after officers were shot. A suspect, Inglewood, hours earlier. The mayhem marked the second time since late May that the city's upscale shopping district had been targeted by looters amid unrest, reigniting the debate over policing as the city leaders continued to point fingers, and downtown again was shut down overnight, lead, heading to Tuesday. So what they mean by shut down is, for those who are unaware, the downtown core of Chicago is surrounded by the Chicago River. It's just as a point of reference, kind of like how Manhattan in New York is an island. It is basically identical to what the downtown core of Chicago is like. There needs to be bridges and roads built in order for them to access the island. And when they say that the downtown was shut down overnight, all of the bridges were raised, and this only happens in very specific situations, in very dire situations. There was one bridge left down for emergency use only, and it was not for local traffic. So what the Lightfoot did was concentrate all the rioting, all the looting, into the downtown area to try to keep it out of the suburbs, try to keep it out of residential areas. Which, if you're in a dire situation, I can understand the logic there. You don't want it to go to the people. If they're going to be fucking bonkers and decide that 400 years of slavery deserves a Gucci belt and a fucking a down coat, then be my guest. But you also need to catch these people and charge these people. You can't just let them run around and be free like they are in Portland where you have situations where riots have broken out for it's just about three months at this point it's approaching the 90 day mark and in Chicago you it's a much richer area there's more wealth in Chicago on a mass scale there's obviously rich people in Portland but when you're talking downtown Chicago it's the third largest city in America there's going to be considerable wealth there. So in response to these riots, uh, yeah, magnificent mile trash, 13 cops were injured, two people were shot because of the riots that broke out. Our good friends and yours from Black Lives Matter decided that now, decided that now, 
was a great time to poke the bear. Decided that right now was a great time to release just the most 40 IQ statement that they could muster. And this coming from a 20 IQ collective. Let's take a look here. Yesterday, August 9th, 2020, Chicago police shot another black person in Inglewood. Gives no context, they could care less what the black guy was doing when he got shot, but nonetheless, Chicago police alleged that they stopped someone who had been suspected of possessing a gun. Okay. Next, the young person ran away. Rightfully. Rightfully? Fearing for his safety and his dangerous interaction with racist and armed police. That's considering... Whatever. The cops then pursued him on foot, going directly against the DOJ recommendation to eliminate foot chases. Well, if he has a gun and he's going to be running through a neighborhood and you consider it dangerous, you have an obligation to stop him. But the chase culminated in CPD shooting that young person, creating violence out of a situation where no one was in danger. CPD claims the victim shot first and they found a gun on the scene. These details are uncorroborated, partially because CPD also claims that there is no body camera footage available for this interaction. This is a clear violation of state law and CPD policy, and another example of police showing a lack of transparency. It is shameful that such public instances of police lying as Laquan McDonald, Haritha Augustus, and others in Chicago alone, journalists continue to retreat the police account as impeachable fact. They continue to treat police account as an impeachable fact, sorry. Uh, so, for those who are unaware, Laquan McDonald, when he was shot by the police, this was a very tragic situation. This was something that's a little bit suspect. you got to press X to doubt on this situation. So, to go back to Lori Lightfoot's Wikipedia page here, you see the Chicago Police Accountability Task Force. She was chair on that. Now, what they were are majorly responsible for is releasing a document, a uh, manifesto on the situation, as it were. It accounted all of the information that went down with the Laquan McDonald shooting. What happened there was Laquan was vandalizing vehicles, was carrying a knife, and at the time of the incident when he was shot, the police officers that were on the case, uh, the man who actually shot him fatally, uh, Jason Van Dyke, uh, claimed that uh, Laquan posed a serious threat to him, was going to lunge at him with a knife, and he feared, uh, the officer feared for his life and shot him. He was unfortunately killed. Nobody should ever lose their life. And looking at the footage that came out after the statements were made by the police officer. He was running down the street. He was told, put the knife down, put the knife down. He openly defied the situation. And while he didn't lunge at the cops or anything, they shot him because they felt he was a significant threat to the situation. I can understand both sides. I don't want to call it police brutality, but it's really hard to argue based on the video footage. I'm not saying this guy wasn't Laquan we're talking about here. I wasn't in the wrong for vandalizing vehicles. I just think that the situation was handled poorly by everyone involved. Anyways, to go back, so we're going to go back and take a look at the rest of the statement here. After police shot this young man, a member of Ingo Woods' community are traumatized and want answers. Fair enough. That's one part we can totally agree on. The people of Inglewood showed up immediately because they wanted to protect the community members from harm. CPD, meanwhile, was only interested in protecting itself. Their response to these bystanders was sending in hundreds of officers with assault rifles, tear gas, and batons. Let's make it as dramatic as humanly possible. 
These cops intimidated and beat people for nothing more than being at the scene of CPD's violence. Obviously, because, you know, cops just love to create instances because there's not enough um, action out there, so they need to make their own. Thanks, Black Lives Matter. Yesterday, Chicago police continually provided that they do not keep us safe. They only cause violence and escalate after the fact. Uh, whatever. This morning, Mayor Lightfoot had held a press conference in a predictable and unfortunate move. She did not take the time to criticize her officers for shooting yet another black man. If you have a gun, if you're running through your neighborhood, you pose a significant threat. You fucking ideologues. But look at who I'm talking about. I think it's patently obvious to everyone. Lightfoot instead spent her time attacking looters. The mayor clearly has not learned anything since May, and she would be wise to understand that the people will keep rising up until the CPD is abolished. Ooh. And our black communities are fully invested in. Contrary to Mayor Lightfoot's position, black lives are and always will be more important than downtown corporations who siphon tax increment financing money while avoiding taxes and exploiting the labor of black and brown Chicagoans. <sighs> that is, um, well, it's both right and wrong. Let me explain. Corporations are not more important than single individuals. I think we can all understand that. But as a black supremacist collective that BLM is, has become, maybe always has been, they're always going to perceive themselves as being the victims and being superior at the same time. What they fail to understand is these corporations, these stores, these small businesses that were looted and destroyed also employ black and brown Chicagans. Chicagans? Chicagonians? People of Chicago. And if it wasn't bad enough that these stores are being locked down because of this wildly overreaching lockdown procedure that frankly has gone on far too long. I know I'm really breaking ground here, but anyways, let's continue. These corporations have looted more from our communities than a few protesters ever could. Yet the mayor's reserve the right, reserves her anger for the latter. We will remain in the streets until our demands are met. Oh, that's good. Uh, what's that thing? America doesn't negotiate with terrorists? Um, good luck getting your demands met. We are reminding the mayor that she has not provided black communities any alternative for demanding justice. Um, don't break the law and you don't get in trouble. I understand that there are a couple of cops out there that are assholes that are going to profile you. That's not the majority. The demands for the community control of the police have been ignored and actively resisted for years while CPD continues to murder and brutalize black people and tear black families apart. Massive protests in the wake of the murder of George Floyd have left Chicago the largest city in the country with no <laughs> promise to defund the police. What? Yeah, okay. Um, Los Angeles and New York have entered the chat. Righteous and justified anger, like the kind expressed after the police murder of Laquan and McDonald, and subsequent cover-up, has only proven to be the only tool for police accountability that the public has at their disposal. Um, okay, a bit of information there. Laquan McDonald was murdered prior to the election of... Lori, Lo yeah, Lori Lightfoot here. Um, if you wanted to make a change, you could have voted for somebody who is actually going to institute change. But instead, of course, you know, just keep voting blue or not at all and continue to complain. That is your right after all. Let's continue. If Mayor Lori Lightfoot is upset about the protests last night, then a plausible answer would be to provide an outlet for the people to exert control over policing of their community. Instead, the mayor has opposed and ignored the demands of the Civil Police Accountability Council 
which would empower the people to get justice for police violence and enact the systemic change needed to prevent this in the future. Blasey, 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 the rest of this is crap. So, what was Lori Lightfoot's response to this? I bring you to the straw that broke the camel's back in this one. There's a lot of things she could have done. She could have listened to these lunatics, given in to their demands. Clearly that's not the right answer, obviously. I wouldn't be making this video the way I have if I believed that. But just reading the headline here, citing threats, Mayor Lori Lightfoot defends the ban on protesters on her block. I have the right to make sure my home is secure. We can all agree with that sentiment. We all have the right to make sure our home is secure. I have the right to own a firearm. You have a right to own a firearm. Everybody should take personal security very seriously. In Chicago, it's very difficult, as Second Amendment rights are curtailed vociferously. Understand that the police are there to help you. Obviously, Mayor Lightfoot agrees with that sentiment, because even just looking at this picture, of police officers outside of her block. She believes that the police are there to help her as well. It's baffling the <laughs> the sheer lack of understanding what a community needs and what to provide for a community, listening to the people on the street, listening to the spokespeople that they've elected and disregarding all of that in favor of what? In favor of consolidating power? In favor of despotism? Where the rules for thee, not for me? Lori Lightfoot is just one of three exceptionally terrible mayors. And unfortunately, those three mayors run the three largest arguably the three greatest cities in the United States. And in closing, what is Lori Lightfoot going to do with the demands of Black Lives Matter? Well, here's the options that they have presented for her. Black Lives Matter Chicago activists threaten city to give in to the group's demands. So one of the spokespeople for BLM Chicago held a rally held some kind of a obviously a sponsored press conference as you can see by the different mic flags that are there we'll take a read from Ian Miles Chong here a Black Lives Matter activist in Chicago identified as Taylor Norwood has promised to bring Hal and Fury to the city unless she sees her demands met speaking at a rally on Friday Norwood blasted Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot for turning her back on black women by allowing police to arrest violent rioters, many of whom have not yet been charged with crimes despite their participation in violent activity caught on camera. She claimed in her speech that Lightfoot was not protecting the black women in this city. Black Lives Matter activists in Chicago tweeted out, We have demands that they need to be met. We're not asking for anything. We're telling you what's about to happen with your permission or not. You can listen to us or even get ran over. Now that's the entire crux of Black Lives Matter. They don't want anything coherent. They just want to destroy. They play the semantics game of if you aren't for them, you're automatically against Black Lives. And this isn't a new point, but it's very important. Black Lives Matter. The three words are very important. Black people's lives do matter. Brown people's lives do matter. White people's lives do matter. The point that Black Lives Matter group is trying to make is that they're superior. And if you don't believe that, we're just going to cry and make a big fuss until you either feel bad enough for us or we're just going to tear the whole fucking shit down. So law-abiding citizens 
are starting to see through this. They're starting to see that this is merely a supremacist group and not a group of people that, I don't want to say can't be reasoned with, but they haven't proven themselves to be a collective of individuals that are reasonable. This has been going on since the end of May. Lightfoot is more convinced that looking after her own family instead of looking after everything going on in Chicago is far more important anyways. So, I'll leave it with that. So in closing, while she's probably not the worst mayor in the history of mayors, I could make a strong case that Lori Lightfoot is one of the worst and most incompetent individuals in public office right now. Her caring more about what her hair looks like with getting a haircut at the beginning of the coronavirus lockdown because I's gots to be on TV and not shutting down these riots is baffling at best and criminal at worst. I thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this. It's my very first endeavor into doing anything quite like this. I will be making a separate video explaining what I'd like to accomplish with this channel and once again I thank you for your attention and hope to talk to you again soon. I've been Don Consuelo with the DKS channel. Follow your gut, get after it. Take care guys. She's the first openly lesbianic. <laughs> she a fucking transformer.